Soon, hello. Turn some lights down. Yes, yes, much better. Yes. Much better. All right, good afternoon, everyone. This is the Warriors question and answer period. Unfortunately, one of our Warriors got caught in Riverside Park uh, right now. He's stuck to a bench, so we're trying to get him out. So I'd like to introduce, we'll start going down, we have Thomas G. Waits. Better known as Fox. Dorsey Wright. Michael Beck, War Chief, better known as Tom, David Harris, Coach Eves, we got it out, James Remar, better known as Ajax. Yeah. Alright, so what we're going to do today is we're going to thank the Warriors for coming up here and allowing us to ask them some questions. Thank you so much. We give a big round of applause. They've also given us the opportunity as Fury's Revenge to see if we can get back at them at some point. <laughs> We had a chance, but I don't know if we're going to do it now. So if you'd like to, please, if you have any questions in the audience, if you have anything you'd like to know, if you have anything you'd like to say, they definitely love praise, please come up. We have right here the gentleman with the Wintercon staff on. You can come on up and ask us some questions. Hello. Can you just give us a quick rundown of what you're working on now, where you're at, any projects? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm the I'm currently in the third season of Gotham. Uh, I play uh, 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 Commissioner Gordon's uncle, his long lost uncle Frank. And uh, I'm coming up in the middle of this uh, this third season. And also uh, in January, uh, I'm on the show uh, The Path on Hulu, and uh, I'll be in that. Uh, for the whole second season. Uh, I closed in a play off Broadway called Austin, where I played the character Austin. He was a middle-aged man, desperate to get his wife and child back, and realized he was a homosexual. So you can imagine what that was like. Yeah, yeah, now that's something to talk about. I had to kiss a man on stage. Uh, I have a rock and roll band called the Thomas G. Waits Project. We're here on December 9th at the Blue Room in Secaucus, New Jersey. Please come because we're raising uh, money and buying toys for underprivileged children. And I have my own acting studio, TGW Acting Studio. All right now, currently starring with the uh, New York City Transit Authority. <laughs> I need Subway Tunnel near you. Uh, T-Train. T-Train. I'm, uh, I'm a construction flag. I also do uh, voiceovers with uh, Abrams Artists, which is my name to see you guys. Commercial voiceover. Plenty products that I've already heard already. And it's uh, my voice news me. I also have a uh, website, which is Brightway Media Group, LRC, where I do uh, contemporary music. Maybe a lot of what's called future base R and D. And um uh, writing a screenplay. Other than that, see you in the tunnels. <laughs> um, as they say in England, I am currently in rest here, which means that I am unemployed in the acting profession. <laughs> but I do have a movie that I filmed a couple of years ago, an independent film called The Grace of James, that is to be released in early 2017. Uh, I 
am involved uh, in my home state where I live uh, in some land development, so that's taking up my time at the moment. So hopefully some of the land that I have will sell and help me and my family. <laughs> it's good. I uh, just finished doing a gift shot. I saw a talent show called Elementary, Lucy Lou. And uh, I have an uh, independent film coming out. Uh, it's called Mommy's Box with uh, Joseph Gennafio and uh, Bill Salino. And uh, I'm currently helping raise my two lovely precious grandmothers. That's how I'm doing. Um, I stopped acting in the early 80s, never pursued it after that. To catch you up, um, I worked as a television news anchor for 17 years, political stuff. Then I worked on Capitol Hill for U.S. Congressman and Dan Hayworth. I was a press secretary. And now I do media relations for a number of companies. I'm also a pastor.
And then, um, last thing is, I don't really have any specific facts for that. It's a correct call. Frankly, I'm surprised I've lived this long. It's not just, every, anything else is icing on the cake. And as far as I know, there is no, uh, there is no future for Dexter on television. If, um, if Mike has the, the, the desire to pursue it as a feature, you know, it, it may get some life there, but that's just pure speculation. Yeah. Absolutely. I think you have a question about it getting bigger, right? What was your question? How do you feel about it growing and getting bigger? Sorry. You know, this is because um, when I was growing up, I used to be on uh, HBO or Showtime. Kind of like one of those movies that they must have bought at a little rate because they showed them all the time. And then it kind of disappeared as I got into my 20s and as I got, you know, moving, I moved from Detroit to here and as I got here, it seemed like there was like an underground of people who loved the movie. But now we see it at like cons all the time, and it seems like it's just kind of building that momentum as the bar for next time goes on. Do you, have you noticed that, or is it kind of it's been like you know, always felt this, you kind of been like this company that's always been around? Well, I have this uncanny knack for knowing when something's right and it's going to work. So from day one, I knew this film was going to be a phenomenal thing, and it was going to last through the test of time. The reason why I know this is because, as I say, I can predict things like this when they're when they perfect. Is when I was laying in bed and I asked my third wife, how come my first marriage didn't last that long? And she said, hell if I know, but here's some divorce papers. No, there's nobody in the world that at the time we did this. Maybe way too much of my life. At no time did we feel, or at least I felt, that this is going to be what it is. I mean, it's... it's totally dependent on what people like. I'm not going to say, you know, it was the greatest group of actors, maybe the greatest director. It hit at the right time. It hit a note that stuck with a lot of people. And thank goodness, God, or whatever you, you know, put your faith in, that it lasted this long, that people are still interested. Am I surprised? Every day I wake up and somebody remembers my name and says, you were clean out of the water. That, and that is that uh, to say that, and, and anybody correct me, but we were all uh, New York stage actors, and you know, we came under the center of this thing, and we acted uh, the way stage actors act. We, we were all trained to make it as authentic as possible, and really listen for uh, you know conversational reality, and make it like we really were a young gang. And, you know, with the theater, when the, when, the, when the curtain goes down, that's it. And, and I, I speak for myself, it was, it was, it was a huge surprise that it had any life beyond uh, the actual filming of it. I, I, I was completely removed from the idea of it being an actual movie. And when I saw the movie on the screen for the first time, condensed 88 minutes of what we had spent this whole summer doing, we were living and breathing each other. Day and all, all night long for, for, for the entire summer. It was a completely different experience. And like, I didn't even know what editing was at that time. And uh, as far as the, uh, the, the resurgence of, of the film, you know, we're here at this, uh, this event and, and, and cosplay has become something uh, of a real phenomenon. It's, it, it's exciting, it's fun, it's accepted, it's enjoyable. It's, some people's passion, and um, The Warriors is basically a cosplay film. If you if you look at the opening sequence with all the guys in their different outfits, that was the signature of the, of the movie, was, was the outfits. And, uh, you know, I think it's, uh, it gives people a chance to, to express themselves and experience being a part of the movie by donning these costumes. So, that's it. And just Piggybacking on that, that actually happened fairly early. I remember in the early 80s, three or four, a friend of mine came back from uh, Europe. He had been in Paris, 
and he said, do you know what I saw when I was in Paris? Do you remember Rocky Horror Picture Show, how people dressed up and went for me? He said, they're playing it in Paris, the warriors and the characters are dressing up. This is as early as four years after the initial release, so that cosplay thing was even beginning at that point. So something about that movie struck that chord for people. Thank you. I would just disagree with Grossi. This is the greatest group of actors. Right? Greatest group of actors. With exception of one. And Walter Hill is a pretty great director. Yes. Can you say your name when you introduce yourself? Then? Thank you. My name is Daniel. Um, first of all, let me say I love that movie. I've been watching it since I was a child. I definitely watch it every time I call it a favorite. Maybe like, I'm actually 40 years old. How do you guys feel about the way Coney Island looks now and the way it looked back then? Well, that's, it, it, uh, it, what Coney Island looks like now, I suppose, to what we shot this movie is totally different. It's like 42nd Street, uh, 42nd Street, Disney. It doesn't look like it was back in the 70s, it's a whole different look. The Coney Island was when we shot the movie. Yeah, and it's not like the old Coney Island look that you see now. Yeah, and the way it looked back then, Definitely, you know, definitely has changed from the 70s and 80s from my perspective also. Everything looks so much commercial. Like, what it was back then. To me, it was more old and more free. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, what do you think about the new Coney Island? Well, that's a good question. Well, you know, it's not the same thing. It's just like Coney Island was more like a movie theater. Yeah. Coney Island was like a movie theater. Yeah. Coney Island was more like a movie theater. Yeah. Coney Island was more like a movie theater. Yeah. Coney Island was more Perhaps an updated person of that. Well, there's been a lot of talk of doing the over the last 10 years. Uh, most of the fans I hear of that come up to us and say, please don't, I'll never be the same, I'll be the same. Uh, if they did do it, it wouldn't be the same film just because of the way people see them right now. The attention span of uh, younger viewers, uh, audiences. They may do one, I think it's successful. And I think the art, the production from the television series right now for the world. It's uh, the name is two brothers from the Uru. The Russo brothers of Uru are talking about making it into an episodic television series. I don't know. Like, 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 you know, there was just simply an internet article in September, late on September, the Russo brothers were planning to make a TV series. That's all I know. Whether it's got any legs, it's going to happen, I have no idea. I can't imagine what the Warriors do from week to week. <laughs> <laughs> you see the game? You know, like, there's all kinds of stuff. That's true. I mean, look, I gotta... Go shopping and find a new apartment. <laughs> I, you know, I, I think that if, uh, if, a, if a piece has good characters, you can do whatever you want with it. You know, so long as they don't try to reinvent the wheel. Uh, I mean, Hamlet is a great play. It's been mounted many, many, many times. Uh, if it's, if it's not, not that I'm equating it with the Hamlet, but if it's... I think that a, a, a piece does not have to be held as, as sacred. Uh, if you come along and you do something that's respectful and it's good, you're not trying to, you know, uh, and you don't make the mistake of, the, of destroying this dramatic structure, which is what a lot of remakes do, they kind of kill it by, by, by trying to make it more acceptable to a wider range of people. That's, that's always a mistake. But if, if, you know, the video game came along and, and people loved it, people say it's a remarkable video game. It, it, it has us do it on the stuff. I see comic book versions of this. You know, there's one floating around about the Marcy on Rembrandt and, and Ajax being broken out of jail. And I was reading it yesterday, it's fantastic. Um, I think these are very live characters that have a lot of potential for, for, uh, for, for future development. And uh, the, I don't think you can remake what we made. I mean, we also had the, uh, the luxury of being in a, in a, in a transitional time in, in, in 
history when gangs could believably almost not carry guns. You know, there's one gun in the movie, and uh, it's fired twice. And that's just kind of historically something that isn't happening right now. Um, director by the name of Tony Scott was uh, Ridley Scott's brother, was a, was a big uh, enthusiastic supporter of, of, of remake of the Warriors, and it was something that he wanted to get get going over the years. Uh, he never really did, and unfortunately, he's no longer with us. So that, what's going to happen next? I don't think it's safer. I think we could do something. I don't think there's a part of any of us that have done that. Like the parole officer.